it's just after 3 p.m. here on December 31st, Monday. Happy New Year's to everyone. Um, what I'm going to do is take you through some of the moves I've made recently in the past few days and um, compare the portfolio's performance to the market, take a look at it, see how it balances out, and um, tell you what I think is going to happen in 2019 and how I'm going to maneuver, especially January coming up. So without further ado, uh, today we're just up about $200. Um, this is kind of false because it went up pre-market. Let's take a look at some of the moves, um, actually culprits. Uh, Apple up a percent. Um, everything else a, a, a bit of a mixed bag. The XK is even. Gold miners, silver miners up a little bit, and um, also uranium is up. Energy fuels up almost five percent. URG almost ten percent. Chemical almost two percent. URA a bit more than half a percent. Okay, so uh, moves. Let's go to the notifications here, the history. You can see that my most recent move is I just added to my Alibaba position by five shares. I bought a couple of Spotify stocks because they're you know, at 113 right now. Um, I wanted to average down. And then I sold a put contract for Apple for this Friday for just $50. Um, and I've received a few dividends. Um, and here goes some Apple trades that you don't know about and I made last week. So the last previous trade I made was, um, I've just sold some, some EXK over here, by the way, a hundred shares trying to lessen that position a little bit and raise some cash. Okay. So Apple, I sold the con put contract at 115, bought it back at, at 79 giving me about um, $36 in profit. These are just some cash deposits that are coming through. More dividend, an expiration of a put sell. Collecting the money from that. Um, I was trying to work a trade here, it didn't happen. So more Apple action. <clears throat> oh, so I bought some Suncoke Energy, just 10 shares. Just to just because I think it's a little bit undervalued there. Um, although I don't have a very good read on this company, I'm just judging by price action, and um, I just want to be a little bit involved in their business. I've also sold some uh, Russian index ETF put sell uh, expires on the 18th. A lot of stuff is going to expire on the 18th. And uh, see, this is me just trying to work some trades, this particular trade. <clears throat> and then we have um, an Apple put sell at $74. And I bought it back up at 13 So that's... Um, another $63 profit or so. And then there's another Apple trade. Here's me selling the GDX uh, put contract. And here's the final <clears throat> Apple trade. This is when I buy it back. Um, I've sold a call against URA all the way into May. Um, chemical call sell into December I'm sorry, into um, January 11th, $15 from that. I got rid of Switch finally, took a big loss, probably around $500 loss from that. That's a big loss. Never doing that again. Um, all right, so I sold SH because I got some profit off of that. And so um, I decided to call it quits and use the cash for options selling instead. <clears throat> That's after the big market drop. This was my um, only market short. So now I'm kind of flying naked a little bit. Not a little bit, but a lot of bit. So here it is, $169. And the reason why I started 
playing with Apple now is because I need to raise the money in order to pay my monthly fee for having such a large margin account. So now, as you'll see in a little bit, I have $30,000 of margin to play with and I need to make $125 a month to cover the cost of that. So here's my first attempt, which I was successful. Uh, I sold an Apple put for 169 and then I bought it back at 29, which gives me a $140 profit. So I've already paid off my, um, my monthly fee with this one trade and then some, and I had, you know, um, $15 profit plus the other trades I was able to make last week for Apple, which are additional, uh, profit, which is like another hundred bucks or so a little bit less, I think. So that's kind of what's been happening. Uh, I've been trying to trade Apple and now I actually sold a, a, another Apple put for $50 and see if I can buy it back in the new year for a cheaper price or just let it run out. I'm not opposed to owning Apple. It's $150. Oh, so much activity. It's a $150 uh, put or is it? A... All right. So if Apple drops down 150, I'll be forced to buy it next week, but I'm not so mad about that, you know, um, because I wouldn't mind owning Apple at 150 and I can just sell calls and try to get my money back. I don't think it's going to be another play like switch where it's just going to, you know, precipitously fall without any stop because I know Apple. I don't know switch. I mean, I know Apple better than I know switch anyways. I'm highly doubtful that he's going to keep dropping down and lose another 50% of its value from here, unless there's like a huge broad market based sell off and it just gets dragged down. In which case I'd rather own Apple than many of the other companies in the S&P anyway. Um, so that's what's been happening. Let's go to over here to the account and just look at the distribution of the account here. So I have, um, well, I have more cash than that to play with, but see, so you can see $10,000 I have to play with, but I'm not going to use them up. I want to actually, one of my goals is to wait for the options to expire. The ones that I have running right now to raise cash and maybe double up on my Apple's play and receive double the, um, the premium there. And we'll see if that works out in my favor or not. So that's that's the plan there um let's see total let's look at the winners total return right now my biggest gainer is wheat and precious metals at six hundred dollars um it's a quite a it's my biggest holding at the moment as well so that works out well um energy fuels at 362 dollars so you can see um sig my third biggest winner, Cameco, fourth, royalty income, even though it went down recently, is now my my fifth biggest winner. A lot of, there's not a lot of green here for long-term holdings because I, you know, I do trade out a lot of them. Like SH was up a little bit, but I sold it off. So you might not see a lot of green. You know, this doesn't account for all the trades that I've made. And um, you can see these are all the losers here, very big numbers. Um, what hurts the most is these two right here, URA, which is the Uranium Global uh, Uranium Business ETF. <laughs> I'm down a thousand dollars on that almost, and also the Emerging Markets ETF, which I'm also down another thousand. So that's that's hurting a lot. <clears throat> that's hurting a lot. But well, hopefully this turns around. Um, if we go by amount of equity I have with precious metals then is the RSX which is the Russian ETF Apple comes in third global uranium <clears throat> ETF uh, in fourth place and then the emerging markets fund in fifth and then C-SPAN in sixth etc going down the line so Endeavor used to be a little bit higher now it's no longer this high um, so that's kind of the, the breakdown here of the portfolio. Um, it's valued at the moment at 43,576, 
four, <laughs> we just switched off 43,565 and six cents. Now let's take a look at this is uh, the week's performance. <clears throat> this week's been favorable, up almost $2,000 in valuation here of this portfolio. One month performance is going to be a little bit worse. Um, minus $841 or almost 2%. The three months is minus 2.7%. And year over year, my yearly performance is down 1.25%. Let's compare that to uh, the SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF index following exchange traded fund. So 2.7 in the last three months and yearly 1.25. Let's see. So three month performance, a ton better. 13.89% down for the S&P <clears throat> index fund. And then the yearly performance is minus almost 5%. So beating the market this year, but you know, um, the portfolio itself hasn't really outpaced the market in the previous years, but in my defense, in the previous two years, if you go home, you can see like the all time is not very high. The all time is just up only 3% <clears throat> in these previous years. But in my defense, this, uh, for the majority of the life of this account, it's only been playing with minimal sum. All right, so I had to build the cash in there. And so, you know, a, a $1,000 gain here would, would have been a lot. Let's see, let's find the end year, November, December. Well, that's a big gain right here, okay? So January, somewhere around there. All right, so Let's call it two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars is a big all time gain for a you know ten thousand dollar portfolio or less. It's only in the past year that I've really infused this this uh, account with cash. And so now, you know, I'm winning I'm going up and down two thousand dollars in a matter of a couple of days and not in a matter of years. So in my defense, you know, it's just uh it, the account is much more volatile now because no, it's not more volatile, but it seems more volatile because the sums are bigger, right? It's a richer account. All right. Anyways, um, all time is only up 3%. So beating the market so far this year and hopefully next year as well. Uh, hopefully I'm in the positive. I don't want to be down a percent point two five, but you know, I'm hoping that this strategy plays out. Let's see, where did I start here? July 1st. So pretty much where I'm at right now. Yeah, so I mean, through this option selling, I've managed to get, basically mitigate a lot of my losses and my hedging has helped out as well. So I'm not as far down as the market. So what's gonna happen in next year? What do I think is gonna happen? I think is Silver is going to uh, have a crack up um, that's going to be short lived. As I explained in previous videos, um, I think it's going to not last very long, maybe like two to three months at the maximum. And hopefully I have a, a good chance to mitigate some of my liability here through the option sales of EXK put option sales. You can see I have, you know, another $500 of liability. So that needs to get erased. And um, I may exit a lot of the CXK position at that point. You know, hopefully I'm looking for like at least $3 worth of valuation here. And uh, at, this, at that point, I'll have probably exited the whole entire position and re-rolled it into some more option, option plays. Um, so the position in the options and the position in my equity as well in my stock. So I'm going to sell that off as well. I have more EXK in my main account, but for the purpose of this account, I don't want it to be like, I don't want it to follow the same strategy as the other accounts. So I want it to have its own personality, which is going to be more mostly based on option selling. 
and um, some dividends and just um, a, a couple of hedges in resource sectors. All right, so it's going to be a kind of a well device diversified portfolio with um, its main money generating function uh, being option selling on margin. Um, now, when I say option selling on margin, it's not like other accounts where, you know, you, you get the margin and you kind of sell calls or puts or whatever naked. It's, you, you sell op options naked, meaning you don't have coverage for it. Every um, option that I sell does have coverage here, even though the money's borrowed, if that makes any sense. Um, it, okay, it doesn't, it's, sim <laughs> it's similar to other accounts where <laughs> you sell on margin, but it's not. It's cover. It's on margin, but it's covered. The other ones, other accounts like an e-trade or whatever you can sell on margin and not have it covered all right i hope that clears things up if you're confused about that look it up all right now um that's an overview for the account i told you what i think is going to happen in the beginning of next year what i plan on doing with my money and also um i'm also betting on a little bit of china here and russia making big bets in the eastern kingdoms there and hopefully that pays off in the next year uh, with the emerging markets as well. I'm thinking the next year is going to be the year of the emerging markets and, and the Eastern kingdoms. Not so much. I call them kingdoms, even though they're not, but I like to call them kingdoms. Um, and I think uh, commodities are going to go up. Um, I think precious metals are going to go up uh, initially. I think emerging markets are going to go up. Eastern kingdom is going to go up. Um, Apple's going to stay flat. U.S. market is going to stay flat. Um, treasuries are going to, you know, I think that central bank is going to be uh, very, very easy next year because the markets are going to be under a lot of pressure and return basically nothing for the next year as well. Maybe a few percent, maybe a few negative percent. It could be volatile. But I'm, I'm expecting the, the U.S. stock market to be somewhat flat for the next 10 years or so. All right. That's already a really long video. I gave you an overview of the account, show you my latest trades and how I plan on uh, making money. I may actually uh, sell off a really long uh, put for Apple and just bank on that. We'll see. Just to ride out all the volatility through the year. I may or may not. We'll see. All right. With that said, I'm going to stop recording now. Um, it's been an interesting year. Hopefully the next one is a bit better for everyone. Uh, wish you all a happy new year and peace out.